Welcome back to Brightlink. In this video, my goal is to give you a better understanding of how to use the ADT Control app. I'll be going over the home screen, history, how to update codes, as well as make changes to your security system. Now in this video, there's a likelihood that your ADT Control app could look different than mine. Uh, whether that be you have a business account or you simply have different features attached to your security system. What I'm going to show you today will really just be the basics of how to use the ADT Control app for what I would say 80% of our customers are using on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's jump right into the ADT Control app. This video is assuming that the app is already configured and you've already created your username and password and you're ready to log in and get started using it. I'm going to open the app. And before I start talking about this, I'd like to make a side note at the time of making this video, the version of the ADT Control app is a 4.21.15. Let's go back to the home screen. And to get started, I like to start on the top right hand corner. This is the rolling 30 day event history. ADT Control will keep track of any and everything that happens on the security system for 30 days. This includes motion activity, door windows opening and closing, as well as event types or automation. From the home screen, this middle area with the ADT shield, if I select that, this brings up my arming menu. I can get a status on my sensors so I can see what's open and what's closed. I can also arm my security system in stay or away. Here we have some extra arming options that are pretty useful sometimes. Silent arming would arm the security system and not make noise. No entry delay would arm the security system and make everything an instant or a perimeter opening, which means that even if somebody were to open the front door, it would trip the alarm system immediately. Force bypass, I will commonly leave this selected because if you were to leave the premises and forget a door window open, you can arm the security system and force bypass the one opening, allowing you to arm everything else. Let's go back to the home screen. Let's talk about the bottom portion of the home screen. This is where you will find your automation devices. Uh, for this example, we have a door lock and a couple light modules. You could have thermostats, garage door openers, uh, any home automation type device you would find in this bottom menu. If I were to select my door lock, I can lock and unlock this through the ADT Control app. I can of course turn lights on and off. And I could also set up a scene. Now scenes are pretty cool because they allow you to do multiple actions with one click of a button. So for example, if I were to click on sleep, this might arm my security system for the stay mode lock my front door, turn off lights, and adjust my thermostat. If I pull up on this tab, I get the weather on the bottom today, as well as a five-day forecast. And if I wanted to edit this menu, I can edit my home screen automation menu. Let's go to our menu on the top left-hand corner. Now in this menu, there is a whole lot of information. I'm just going to cover the basics today of what you would use on a regular basis, let's say. The first thing is users. Here's where I can configure users for my security system or door locks. I can add and delete. I can also create restricted schedules on certain users. For example, if I needed to add someone, I could click on this plus symbol put in their information. And create that user. In this section, I could type in their four digit code. If you click on generate code, it randomly generates a set of four numbers. So I'll type in a code and then choose what I'd like to apply this code to. So I'm going to apply it to my security panel and I'm also going to apply it to my door lock. 
once I click on save, this is going to push this information to my security panel and door lock. It takes approximately two minutes to synchronize this code. Now in the user section, I can also edit when this code works. So I can have it work all the time, or I could work it on a restricted schedule. If I no longer need this code, I can always go back into my user menu and delete this user. Now that user no longer has access to my security system or door lock. Let's go back to the menu and go to notifications. I'll briefly talk about this. Push notifications, I'm always a fan of push notifications. Uh, over text messages and emails. Me personally, critical alerts are enabled. What that means is even if my phone is on silent or do not disturb, it will still alert me when my alarm system is triggered. Alarm events are on, and here I have some other personal favorites, arming and disarming, reminder to arm my security system if something gets left open longer than 30 minutes, and a problem with my security system or a system action to watch. This would be like a power failure or a low battery or a problem with a sensor or automation device. Let's go back to the menu and go down here to app settings. Uh, the ADT control app will allow you to set up face ID or a pin code. This is useful uh, because it will keep you from having to log in with your username and password each time, yet still keep the app secure. Now there is a whole lot of other stuff in the menu. The last thing I want to talk about is add device. And in the add device section, you can add your Google Nest or Google Home account and link it to ADT. We did make a separate video for this too, specifically on how to link ADT control and Google Home. I hope this video has been helpful for you in how to navigate the ADT control app. Again, your app could look very different than the one that we have in this example, depending on the features that you have with your security system. If you have any questions or need help, leave us a comment. We'll make sure to get back to you and answer all of those. And stay tuned for the next one. I hope to see you guys soon.